What's up guys? So budget versus junk. In this video, I'm going to be taking four firearms, all four priced under $200. Two of them are going to be really good budget firearms and two of them are going to be just complete junk. Uh, this video idea can progress into, you know, reviews, let's say on like a Canic or something along those lines. And if you guys would like to see more like that, let me know down in the comments below. But all four of these firearms are going to be under $200. Now, uh, in my case, not all these firearms are going to have an MSRP under $200, but it's going to be under $200 that I paid. So the first gun on this list barely made it on the list, and it is a Bursa Thunder. Now, I've noticed these things have gone up in price. When I bought it, I paid $200 bucks before tax, so it just barely gets on this list. I have nothing but good things to say about the Bursa Thunder. For a budget handgun, it will surprise you, at least it surprised me. The fit between the slide and the frame is pretty impressive. There's not a lot of play compared to a lot of firearms that are in the $500 range. And it is decently smooth. Chambered in 380, it is a double single action pistol. It's pretty reliable. Now I will say with Tula ammunition, it has issues setting off the primers, which having a double single action trigger, you can always just hit it again and the second time it always goes off. The gun feels fantastic in my hand, but I do admit there are two negatives about this handgun. Um, it is snappy. I've noticed female shooters usually complain about it. They say it's not pleasant to shoot because it's a direct blowback and you get kind of a snappier recoil. And even though it's 380, it's still a little bit uncomfortable to them. I notice I get a little bit of a red mark here. But for me, I don't have as much of a problem, but you know, I'm kind of manly. All right, that was kind of weird, but um, anyways, that was strange. The second negative I can think of for this firearm is the frame material. Now, you can see that it's discolored a little bit here where I've gripped it. And I did carry this firearm for a while, but I kept seeing pictures of these firearms with broken frames and it always kind of worried me. And so I t decided to spend a little bit more money and get a Smith & Wesson m &P shield instead of this. Not saying this handgun is cheap junk, but in my experience, it's been a fantastic handgun. And for $200, this handgun was a steal. I really love this handgun. It's basically nicknamed the uh, cheap man's PPK. And uh, that's the reason I got it in the first place because I've always liked the looks of the PPK and this kind of resembled it. So, and for a good price. So this makes it on the list as a very good budget handgun. The second one on the list is definitely my crappiest firearm. This is the Jennings Bryco in 380. I hate this gun and why the hell am I wasting my time on an intro? As soon as I got it and took it out to the range, I had some weird hangups with the slide and it wasn't hanging up on rounds, it was hanging up on the actual slide. That's strange. Um, and eventually, I had the bolt face break out of it and the firing pin shot out the barrel. Luckily, I was at home when this happened. I made a whole video about it. It was back before I really started to improve my videos. So it's still up, but I wouldn't recommend it because it's not my best work. But it's a funny video that, and I made it just for, you know, shits and giggles. <laughs> but, uh, this thing is by far the shittiest gun that I own. It's just made out of cheap materials, as you can see. I mean, you know, a good stainless steel slide wouldn't have the bolt face break out of it. I mean, I don't think. <laughs> All right, so I'm keeping this handgun around for two reasons. The first of which is, is a fantastic training firearm. 
you get somebody who's maybe never held a handgun before or just new to firearms in general, you can hand them this and know there is no possible way of it going off. If you can see, I don't know if you're going to see, yeah, you can see straight through the gun because the bolt face broke out and there's nothing in here to set a bullet off. Well, I mean, I suppose you could put a bullet in the chamber, put a nail through here and hit it with a hammer. Uh, that's a terrifying thought. I hope nobody's trying that. Please do not try that. <laughs> I'm scared somebody's gonna try that. Anyways, um, in normal circumstances, this handgun will never go off. So let's say you hand it to them and they immediately put their finger on the trigger or point it at you, you know, they sweep you. I mean, it's still gonna make you a little bit uncomfortable, but it's not as big of a deal because it's a lot safer. So you can teach them the basics like how to grip a handgun, um, trigger control, sight acquisition, you know, things like that. And so that's why I keep this thing around. So that's one of the reasons. The other reason is I can fix it. Um, only the slide is broken. Uh, ironically, the, uh, the slide online goes for 75 bucks and that's what I paid for this handgun in the first place but if I get enough requests I may try to repair this thing and see if I can get it to shoot again um, I really don't want to do that but if I have enough you know people in the comments asking me I will consider it but this is by far the junkiest cheapest gun on my list uh, I probably shouldn't have hit it from the back I don't know if this thing's gonna fire. Isn't this such a nice gun? Oh, guys. I think I just stumbled across the shittiest gun I have ever seen. Now, the next one on my list is quite a bit different, but I thought it deserved to be on this list. It is a Turkish Mauser. This thing is so huge. I can I can hardly keep this thing all on camera. I mean, look, I'm, I'm literally it's getting washed out back here because it's going back towards my floodlights. Uh, there's no way of me really holding it on camera. Uh, I tried to do an intro with this thing, and I only got a couple shots that looked really good before it started getting washed out. So I guess I can hold it. Anyways, all right, so this is a Turkish Mauser chambered in 8mm. I love this rifle. This was like the third firearm I bought when I was 18. Uh, I bought it for $150. I'm not sure on that. I know it was under $200. Um, I'm pretty sure it's $150. I keep thinking $125, but I don't think so. Anyways, I got this thing for a really good price. Uh, it was in a pawn shop and I remember looking down the barrel and you couldn't even see rifling. That's how, how rough this rifle was. And if you think the stock looks, you know, bland or bad now, it was even worse. It looked black or not even black, gray before I got to it. I put some, uh, oh, I don't even remember what I used on it, but it was supposed to, uh, clean it up the stock and in the barrel. I spent, uh, I want to say, three days just cleaning out the barrel from debris that's been accumulating. I mean, everyone who looked at this rifle said it was going to be a wall hanger because of how bad the corrosion inside the barrel was. But I was able to clean it out and I took it to the range and I was impressed with the accuracy. Actually, I had somebody else out at the range recently who shot it and he had, I think, a two and a half inch group. Hey. That's not bad. Um, I had somebody else out at the range with this rifle and he was doing really good accuracy wise. So, and you know, it's actually a very smooth action. I have a, another Mauser that's not this smooth. So I really love this rifle. So for 150 bucks, this is a fantastic budget firearm. Um, it'd be great for hunting or literally just taken to the range it's a lot of fun to shoot eight millimeter but this thing is so long look how long this thing is <laughs> and it might turn some people off but uh 
Anyways, I really like this this firearm, and for two or 150 bucks, it was a great budget rifle because you really can't go wrong with Mausers. All right, so the final firearm on this list, which isn't as bad as my Jennings Bryco, is my Davis Industries 38 Special Derringer. Now this handgun works a lot better than my uh, uh, Jennings Bryco, but I will say it has a lot of faults. The trigger pull is awful. It's just terrible. The sights are terrible and there is no accuracy. There's none. I know it's a Derringer, it's a belly gun, but I was hoping that there'd at least be a group, you know, if it's six inches, it's six inches, you know, whatever, you know, um, oh, please don't say that's what she said in the comments. Uh, anyways, I was hoping there'd be at least some sort of accuracy with this handgun and no, I can't find any. I was at, I don't know, 10 feet and there was a massive group. I mean, there's rifling in the barrel. I thought there'd be some stabilization of the bullet, but I can't seem to find any. I don't know if that trigger pull is so awful that I pull all my, all my shots, or there's no sights, basically. Maybe that's it. Oh, the sights aren't horrible compared to some of the guns. But uh, maybe the grip feels, I don't know. I think this gun just can't hit anything. But I guess that's not its intended purpose, most people would say. And it doesn't always like to set all the rounds off. I've noticed, I think it's the bottom cylinder that doesn't want to go off. And looking at it, the firing pin looks a little bit more deformed. No. But it doesn't stick out as far. It's been a while since I picked this handgun up. <laughs> I just decided to make this video. I'm like, hmm. What are my crappiest firearms? And this one just popped up pretty quickly. Uh, I haven't shot it in a really long time because I'm a little bit worried that, you know, it's going to break on me or something. I don't know. This gun makes me a little bit nervous. So, uh, but it does shoot. Uh, but it doesn't always shoot both rounds reliably. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a different video idea I had, and I thought it had a lot of potential because I can review a lot of cheaper, or not even cheaper, uh, inexpensive firearms and be able to review it as, is it junk or is it a budget firearm? And so I can keep this uh, video series going. If you guys like it, please let me know down in the comments if you like this kind of video. Also, The Gun Doctor is gonna be doing a video kind of on the other end of this discussion. I can't remember offhand what he said he was gonna call it. I just know it's gonna be budget firearms versus expensive firearms. I think that's kind of an intriguing idea, so I'm gonna put a link to his video whenever he does upload it down in the comments below, so look for that. I definitely recommend you go uh, subscribe to uh, The Gun Doctors. So anyways, I think this video idea of mine, budget versus crap, has a lot of potential in the future. Like I said, I can review a lot of firearms like um, a Canik or let's say a Tokarev, something along those lines and have it in this series of is it junk or is it a good budget option. So if you guys want to hear my opinion that many times. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming up in the future.